Yo, what up, what up, what up, and welcome back to Pinoy News. Man, listen, all right, um, like, I'm, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Like, yo, people are completely and utterly uninformed. Like Mark Twain once said, he said, look, if you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. But if you do read the newspaper, you're misinformed. And this is, this is the goddamn problem. Legitimately, like, people just don't know shit as a whole. And, like, I feel like everybody who votes, who has the right to vote, should be informed on some very basic things. Just basic. And we're about to experience a man who's literally, like, I don't want to say he's a thought leader, but, like, you know, he is highly influential among voters who has absolutely no idea what the fuck is going on. And another guy who, i am be real with you, I can't, I can't stand. I hate Dan Crenshaw. But let's let's get to it. The Joe Rogan experience. But that moment is special because there's value in suffering. And in today's society, we have convinced ourselves that there is no value in suffering, that the entire role of, say, government is to end your suffering. But this is a false promise. Not only is it a false promise, but it will create a weak society that is unable to sustain itself. Well, like, I don't I don't really think the government has stood here. You know, I mean, it has a mandate of to stop suffering. I mean, possibly, you know what I'm saying? I think it's there to put a floor on suffering as far as things really concerned. But like the government is there to solve all your problems. That's why everybody really sees it, because, you know, the government is now your mom and your dad. And, you know, I mean, because we have taken away the ability of like individuals to you know, I mean, do for themselves as a whole. Because you've created this fucking nanny state with your fucking retarded ass bullshit, Mr. Crenshaw. You know, I mean, in the end of the day, like you stood here and tried to make your world as safe as fucking possible for your fucking kids to walk around. And, you know, in doing so, we've stood here and, you know, I mean, created this terrible, awful situation that we're in. Let's keep rocking, though. That's a really important point. And I think there's I think there's deep truth in that. This is why victimhood politics is so dangerous. And I would say populism is too. I, 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 I think the two are almost indistinguishable from each other. People are always trying to talk about populism on the right and the left. And I say, look, well, here's what populism is. It's telling you what you feel. It's mirroring your feelings back to you. It's telling you what you want to hear as opposed to the truth. So that, I, I think that's a decent definition. Well, no. And I mean, populism legitimately is... <laughs> it's a backlash of the individual populace as a whole feeling as though they aren't being heard by the politicians, right? It, it's the population of the cover of a country standing here and going, yo, like, no, look, you know what I mean? I don't want you to continue to bring in massive amounts of foreigners to continue to bump up our GDP by destroying the fucking value of our labor. You know what I mean? That's populism. And in the end of the day, like, yo, your citizens have a right to stand here and say, no, no fucking more, you worthless pieces of shit. ...of populism. I don't like it. I don't like people embracing it. Um, it. It doesn't just mean, hey, things that are good that people are for. Well, you know what? A lot of people are for $1,600 checks that are free. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's a good policy. Right. That's a good example right. of populism. People voted. If they voted and said, do you want a hundred thousand dollars for yeah, a year? Totally. Everybody would vote. Yes. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. But, is, the, but is it, but is it a sustainable policy? Yeah, you know, of course right, not. Of course not. Um, and the, the kind of amounts to the, to the, I think drastic lurches and, you know, welfare policy or infrastructure spending and all of these things that, that we're seeing. Well, no, the problem is, is that what we did is we created the dollar hegemony throughout the world, right? With this thing called modern monetary theory, which only works in the United States, by the way. Like the rest of the world is like, you know, they're like, oh man, modern monetary theory, we can just do blah, blah, blah. it only works here, right? Because like the rest of the world is in desperation for the need for our dollars. So they have to go out and earn dollars as a country, you know, selling trade or whatever the case is in order to be able to buy things like oil or whatever it is to be able to fuel their countries. So there's a demand for our currency in the rest of the world that allows us to be able to print off as much as we want at home. And that's something that we don't really have a conversation about, you know what I mean? And it allows us to be able to deficit spend more than any other country in the world without our currency really devaluing as a whole. And because of the fact that like we're not reliant upon the rest of the world for our basic goods, 
right? Relying upon the world for like things like, you know, microchips and things of this nature. But that's only legitimately, that's only because of the fact of our trade policy doing that to us, right? Like if we built the chips here, they would actually be cheaper. We could build shirts and jeans here and it would actually be cheaper. We could build shoes here and it would actually be cheaper. But because of the fact that, you know, their con- the, the corporations as a whole, you know, I mean, have set up these vested interests in, you know, I mean, continuing to manufacture these goods in the rest of the world, you know, I mean, like, and they can automate it here, but they don't make they don't want to make the initial investment to do so. Right. Which is something of what they should be doing. You know, I mean, in, like in the end of the day, you know, because no matter what you're doing, you're still paying for transport costs. Like it doesn't really matter. You know, I mean, that's something that, you know, we're not having a conversation about. You know, I mean, that's something that we don't want to really talk about. And because of the fact that as right wing individuals, we don't want to stand here and go like, man, we want to we don't want to tell businesses what to do and what they can and can't do. But sometimes you have to because, you know, I mean, eventually they're going to eat your fucking lunch and destroy your family. You know, I mean, like, that's why it is that we haven't had a raise in, God, what, fucking 40, 50 years now at this point, you know what I mean, as American workers. Like, the reason why that hasn't happened is because, like, of international fucking trade and the ability of these individuals to continue to bring immigrants and to drop down, the, you know I mean, the value of our labor, which ultimately, ultimately, you know I mean, uh, stands here and drives up the price of, you know, housing and, you know I mean, basic resources that the American family needs. You know, that's how this works and operates. You know, let, let's keep going. Though. It's populism on steroids. It's telling you what you want to hear. And that's not truth. That's not truth. And we have to get back to truth. And we have to get away from this victimhood mentality where we actually, we actually elevate this idea of being helpless. See, that's what's changed. That's what's changed in the last decade. It used to be that, well, you, you might feel some shame. If you were the type to, you know what, you know what, I just, I, I need some help. I feel bad about it. I'm going to get back on my feet, but I need some help right now. That used to be the sort of American way, right? We, we need a safety net. That's, yeah. Nobody would disagree with that. We, we need a safety net. We need to help people who have truly fallen on hard times, who lost their jobs because of COVID. But does that also mean we need to provide a $1,400 check to somebody who never lost their job and whose biggest hardship has been Zoom meetings? Of course not. But over 100 million people were getting checks that never lost their jobs. A hundred million easily through it's, it's, COVID. It's, it's way more. It's way more than that. I, I'm I'm cutting it off at a hundred million. So Hold on, explain checked. that to me. When we when we send out checks, the direct cash payments. I've always been against direct cash payments. So th- these the COVID stimulus checks. Yeah. So because they go out to people anybody got who makes those checks that didn't lose their jobs. Of course. What? Yeah. If you, the the cutoff was like seventy five k a year, so that. Wait, how does Joe Rogan not know how a stimulus check works? Like legit, they like this isn't even like the first time this has happened. Like, oh, they they gave out stimulus checks back under Bush, and it worked the exact same way. If you filed a tax return, like you got a stimulus check. That's that's how the fuck it worked. Like, how does he not understand? Is he really that fucking detached from what's going on in the world? Legitimate? Is he that disattached? I I refuse to believe that this man is that fucking disattached. Means, wait a minute, wait a minute. That means every federal, well, not so every, So people but a that lot didn't of lose getting them any too. money because of the pandemic still got checks? Yeah, these were never, these were never based on your situation. What? Yeah. Really? It's ridiculous. I didn't know that. I yeah. thought you had to lose your job. I thought yeah. there was a problem. Wait, what? How did, how do you not know this? Like they just gave checks to everybody. They didn't give checks to people who lost their jobs. <clears throat> like I lost my job in the beginning of this thing, beginning of the coronavirus, right? And I didn't get a check, right? Legitimately, like I, they didn't give me, they wouldn't even give me unemployment. Like unemployment was denying motherfuckers left and right, like legitimately. Like yo, there was, you know, how many people didn't get unemployment and shit when they lost their jobs? So they just handed out money to everybody, right? Like they handed out twelve hundred, and then they handed out six hundred, then they handed out fourteen hundred, and everybody got it. Didn't matter whether you're working, whether you weren't working, whether you lost money, whether you gained money. It didn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, yo, everybody got a goddamn check. That's how this fucking worked. How the fuck does he not know this? Is he that fucking dumb? Like, yo, legit. How is he that fuck? This is what I'm saying. And him and people he knows who he talks to are allowed to vote. The people who listen to him are allowed to vote. And they're this misinformed. 
Yeah. Wait a minute. If you're so staff people is- who never lost a penny. So if you look at their 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 tax receipts, yep. you look at their their uh, the, what they made in 2019 right. versus 2020. Correct. If they they didn't lose any money. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's based on your just just your income. So I think 75k a year was the cutoff. But also if you're a married couple, 150k, and if you have kids, then it's even more. So you've got like so I've got were, like a lot of active duty military friends are getting thousands of dollars because you know. They- I know people who didn't work. Who are getting like thousands of dollars legit like yo of course like a few of them are committing tax fraud but still like legitimately like yo, i know people like for real who you know what i'm saying are getting like five and six thousand dollar checks on some shit and they never fucking worked like real shit like as long as you filed a fucking tax return and even like people on welfare like yo, they're able to get these fucking returns by just standing here and you know what i mean filing a tax return that says that they didn't get you know what i mean that they didn't work like, yo, every American basically who makes less than like $100,000 a year automatically gets his fucking check. How is Joe this fucking dumb? They have kids and, but it's like, why? And, and they're like, why? Why am I getting, this is such a waste of taxpayer money. You know what I mean? Do your duty no and go, go spend it on a local business that's I been suffering. the but... money was allocated to people that lost money because of the pandemic. No, no, no. Because that we already have a system for that. It's unemployment insurance. Our, our system works fine for that. It, that and this is this was always my thing. It's like, look, I'm in favor of temporarily boosting. Well, let me let me say this. As a dude who makes, you know what I'm saying, seventy five, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year, right? And yeah, I'm in a high demand job where like, you know, if I leave my job, I can get a new one tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Making more money than what I make right now or the same. Um, Let me say this, right? That unemployment insurance does not match my fucking income. Like legit, like the max payment for unemployment is 600 bucks a week. Right. And I'm accustomed to making about 1500. Right. So like it legitimately like, oh, it does not like it doesn't keep up with the amount of money that you make. You know, what I mean, like there's a lot of people out there, you know, like you get an unemployment check and like, you know, if you were making six or seven hundred a week and you get a six or seven hundred hour, you get a six hundred hour unemployment check, you're you're better off. Like legitimately, you're better off than you were because now you don't have to go to work. You're not spending any money, you know, me eating, you know, spending any money on gas. You know, you're not like you're just at the crib chilling. You know what I mean? Like you're literally in better shape. But like if you make more than that, if you're making eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand dollars a week and you go file for unemployment at a max rate six hundred, and my state's one of the highest at a max rate of six hundred. Like I know a lot of places like Mississippi or Alabama or Tennessee where you go to collect unemployment and like you know, like it's like the max out payments like three fifty or four hundred a week. I feel for y'all, right? But like legit, like, yeah, no, they weren't handing out money to people on unemployment. Like they weren't they weren't just taking care of the unemployed. They were fucking they handed his money out to everybody, dummy. You didn't fucking yo, you don't know that? Like legitimately, like yo, <sighs> MMT baby, the magic money tree. Boosting payments to those who are unemployed on unemployed insurance. Usually state run unemployment insurance runs at it, it, it's it's at a formula that would that would make sure that you're not making more than you would have if you were already employed because you don't want to have a disincentive to go back to work. Right. What we did in the initial stages of the pandemic was increase that to 600, an extra $600 a week if you're unemployed. I'm okay with that for a few weeks during hard times. The problem is Democrats want to keep it forever. And now every business I talk to is like, I can't hire people. I, I have so many job openings right now. Can't. Yo, that is happening legitimately. Like people can't get individuals to come in to work, right? Like for, you know what I mean? The garbage wages that they're offering because there's a lot of these places like Family Dollar or, you know, like the local gas station or, you know what I mean? A truck stop or, you know, like a restaurant or a grocery store where they can't find employees, right? And I'll be honest with you. All right. We need some real inflation. And this is how real inflation happens is that like, yo, when wages go up, you have to charge more for goods because like you have to cover your bottom line for the labor costs. And that needs to happen. Right. Because that there is how you st- how you can. Cont- it's a control mechanism inside of the system. Right. And that lets you know that the system is broken in a manner. Right. That lets you. This is this is the bad. This is what you pay for. This is how you pay for bad shit. Right is this is how inflation actually works, right? Legitimately, it's not just, oh, you print off a bunch of money, right? Because you could print off like, let's say, you know, there's $100 in existence right now, right? You know what I mean? And then you print off a trillion dollars and you take that trillion dollars and you put it in a warehouse. 
That initial $100 is a fucking value ain't affected. Legit, it's not going to affect the value in any way, shape, or form. Why? Because it's not in circulation. In the end of the day, right? Like the only way that you end up with, you know what I'm saying, actual money, or actual inflation inside of the system is like if wages go up. Because then, you know what I mean, the demand and the cost for things, you know what I'm saying, is higher, right? And the prices that you have to charge for things is higher. Wages drive inflation. That's how this works. And I don't understand like why it is that this is this basic concept isn't taught. <laughs> like, you know, like every like yo man, listen, like yo, the way I was taught inflation was like through the first way I just explained to you, like you print off a trillion dollars, you know what I mean? And then like, oh my God, like you're just gonna have, you know, massive amounts of inflation. That's how you're taught this. But that's really not how it works. It's a different mechanism altogether. Like you have to have wages go up in order to get inflation. And as long as wages go up, you know, I mean, then you have inflation. But if wages stay down because, you know, they're bringing in massive amounts of illegals, you know what I mean? They're pumping this country full of people to come work, you know what I mean, for like next to nothing. As long as that happens and you have competition in the labor market driving down the price of wages, you're not going to have inflation. You know what I mean? That's just basic premise. You know what I mean? But on the same point, like your wages aren't going to go up. You know what I mean? So like it's just going to be stagnation of your fucking wages. So like you're not going to see growth. And if you don't see growth, then, you know what I mean, you're not going to end up having individuals have the opportunity to do better for themselves. Can't hire anybody because we still have it. It's $300 a week, but we still have it. It means people are getting paid to stay home. There's a distance. They're, they're making a purely rational financial decision. But again, I, that's one conversation. That's that's at least a debate to be had, you know, okay. during hard times. But the direct cash payments, that's nuts. That's nuts. What are, what are the direct cash that, payments? That's the, that's the free money. That's the free money. That's the free money. So this is the people that, even though they still make the same amount they made in 2019 yep. and yep. 2020, they got a big check for yep. no reason. Yep. 100%. That seems crazy. And that's if well, you lose and your if job. If you do the math, that's well over 100 million people. And they just got it. They didn't ask for it. They just received it. So it's not something they're guilty of. Yeah, yeah. They just received it. But, but, but it gets to the cultural argument that we're talking about. No, there was no backlash for this. Even on the right, I remember, I remember you know, I, was, I, was, I was a little frustrated with the president, or, or the ex-president, Donald Trump, uh, the president I voted for, that uh, he, was, he was pushing for those $2,000 cash payments. I said, Shut up. You didn't vote for fucking Trump, you piece of shit. Like, legitimately. Like, yo, you was a never Trumper. Yo, you was talking all types of hardcore, reckless bullshit about the president before he got elected. Shut the fuck up, you fucking college boy motherfucker. Like, yo, dude, legit. Yo, fucking, I hate these fucking guys. Like, real shit, I fucking hate these fucking college educate. And, like, here's the problem, right? Legit, Dan Crenshaw's from Texas. Right, he's from Texas. Does he sound like it? No. No, he does not. He does not have a Texas accent. And why is that? Like, yo, because like this dude went to fucking college and I'm saying and got rid of his goddamn accent and he destroyed his fucking culture. Like, yo, he doesn't care about his fucking heritage. He don't care about any of that shit. He cares about, you know what I'm saying, like, yo, the power that being a US congressman fucking brings him. That's what he gives a shit about in the end of the day. Like, yo. Like, it is what it is. Like, it's so aggravating. Legitimately. Fuck, aggravates the fuck out of me. Like, when you hear some dude, he's like, I'm from Arkansas. Like, he's like, I'm from Arkansas. How are you doing today, right? And I'm like, you're not from fucking Arkansas. Like, I know what an Arkansas guy sounds like. Listen to Bill Clinton when he first got elected. That's what a fucking Arkansas guy sounds like, right? Like, yo, if, you, if you're from someplace and you don't have that accent, like, I'm not going to have any respect for you in the end of the day. Legit. Like, yo, because if you don't have enough respect for yourself to be who the fuck you are and who your parents raised you to be in your community that you came from and all the things that added up to you being you, right? And you stood here and made a fucking conscious decision to destroy the part of you that was that fucking important. Yo, you can eat a dick as far as I'm fucking concerned because legit, you're the problem and not the fucking solution. But don't I'm you like, think that he was doing that politically? And I didn't vote for him. But that's the point. But don't you think but that that's was... that's the point. That's, that's exact. That's exactly the point. There's an incentive now to pay people off with their own money, and it's not good. Yeah, it, but it wasn't, don't you think that he was in a desperation situation where he just wanted to get reelected? I mean, he's coming through this This was whole... in December. He was already... He'd already lost. Oh, so in December, after yeah. he lost, yeah. he still... But he didn't think he lost. 
He, he thought he was still <laughs> a different gonna, conversation. I don't know if you want to get into it. It's a good conversation. Uh, he thought he was going to somehow or another get reinstated. I don't. I don't know if he ever truly believed that, but um, he was pushing for it. But yeah, it is on the on the victimhood side. That's this is the demise of the republic when 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 people are comfortable with being bought off with their own tax dollars and being comfortable and more than that, comfortable with being told that they're victimized and that some other group is is responsible for that victimization right so it's this not is just that they're politics. in a bad situation they're in a so bad somebody situation else someone did it to you and maybe it's the one percent maybe right. it's those those mean corporate yeah. giants and now those corporate giants are trying to get all woke and get on the democrats good side like they always do yeah because you know they don't because they want to maintain their little piece of the pie that's where it gets tricky right where they manipulate the narrative and they they, 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 they realize where people's heads are at so they try to jump on board catch new Yo, but that's not true though, right? Legit. We're probably gonna do a live stream. I'm probably gonna do a live stream tonight. We're gonna have a discussion about this because I have the night off and shit. You know what I mean? But like, yo, I gotta go get my laundry out the fucking dryer. I'm gonna holler at y'all later. Y'all know the deal. Like, share, and subscribe. Check me out on Odyssey. It was Tom Pease. Yo, peace be like one later.